Hello and welcome to Faith and Friends. As always, it's a blessing to have you join us for this week's episode. We're going to start this week, however, with a moment of prayer for our nation and for our region. Primary elections are taking place all across the country, including right here in Ohio, March 15th. So that's a big prayer point. But so are the individual families in our region. Earlier this month, a 19 year old Lima man was shot and killed at Meat City on Kibbe Street. The prime suspect being only 16 years old. We've got a lot on our show today, but before we get into it, Let's just take a moment and come together before God with these specific things. Andy, would you start our show in prayer? Father, we come to you uh, and you ask us to humble ourselves and pray and put you uh, where you need to be in our lives, on the throne. And so we, we, we do that right now uh, as a TV station, as a city, uh, as a region, as a nation. We need to humble ourselves and know that you are still king. You are still on your throne despite all the things that happen around us and despite sudden turmoil that, that we see in our lives, uh, we can trust you and we do that right now. Uh, we pray for those folks affected here in our community, uh, those people that are still hurting, uh, the family and, and the friends of uh, this young man. And we certainly want you to comfort them. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted, Jesus told us, and so we do. We mourn. Uh, we mourn for the loss of life. We mourn for hurt and we know that only you can save us. Uh, we mourn for our country and the state that it is in. We need you, we need uh, people that love you in power, but we know even if they aren't, that you are still in control. Uh, so we bless you and we thank you that you are God. In Jesus' name, amen. We encourage you to keep praying. You know, Andy isn't the only one who can pray. Every single one of us has that ability right. to come before God and talk with him. We encourage mm -hmm. you to be praying for these very issues on a regular basis as well. Well, we have a very strong focus on area youth in today's show. We've heard from many of you talking about the importance of guidance, mentors, and positive programs available to local teens. Today, we're gonna to tell you how a local athletic conference is promoting positive activities among area high school student athletes. We also have an interview with Teens for Christ regarding the upcoming Converge Conference and more. But first, let's take a look at our scripture verse. Deuteronomy 11, 18 through 21, it's talking about investing in the lives of young people, in a sense, mentoring them, guiding them in all areas of their lives. Therefore, you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and your soul and bind them as a sign on your hand. They shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land of which the Lord swore to your forefathers to give them, like the days of the heavens above the earth. We read so much throughout the Old Testament and how God's people are a chosen people and, and how we need, as his chosen people, to obey. And so many times I know in my life in the New Testament, we... we, we wrap our arms around grace and how God forgives us, and He does, mm -hmm. but yet we need to have a reverence for God, that He is, you know, everything's got to be perfect, everything's got to be right there, and He does it for our sake to show us how much He loves us. Mm, absolutely, you know, and as parents, um, we have a responsibility to show that to our children, and maybe you're not in a position where you have children to be doing that, but there are likely other people, other young people in your life who God is gonna place there so that you can be that positive influence for them. Um, just look around, ask God to show you the opportunities because I can guarantee you it's out there. No question about it. Well, sportsmanship, encouraging others and serving as positive role models and using wisdom in areas like driving and texting. Speaking of influencing young people, that's the purpose be behind the Northwest Conference Sportsmanship Program. Last month, we took you behind the scenes to the production of this year's public service announcements created by area high school students right here at TV44. The program is designed to encourage the kids to think about ways they can influence others, making a positive difference in society, and pass down good sportsmanship beliefs to the next generation. Take a look at some of the finished products. No matter what you do, there's always someone watching who wants to be just like you. Leading by example, we are in the Northwest Conference. Play for. I play for Alan East. Spencer Gove. Bluffton. Like India. 
I play for Ada. We play for each other, not ourselves. I play for Presti. For Pauline, who comes with jokes. Play selfless. Be team oriented. We're thankful for opportunities to be involved with programs like the NWC Sportsmanship Team, youth, activities, a positive use of their free time, more of Jesus. When we survey people in this region and ask what is missing, those are things we hear over and over again. Young people need guidance. They need direction. They need Jesus Christ. Well, two men who wholeheartedly agree with that have invested their lives to provide all of the above are Tyler Sutton and Buck Sutton. And there's so many things we could talk about when it comes to today's teens and what they need. But let's start by talking about a once a year event that packs so much in just two days. And that is taking place next month and it's called Converge. And it's going to be exciting, isn't it? Oh man, we are extremely excited, Jennifer, about what God is doing and trying to bring the, the body of Christ together. And uh, so it's not just bringing the youth groups together and, and teenagers together, but also adults and churches and ministries. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, what the momentum that Converge has right now, we're extremely excited about. Wonderful. Tyler, talk a little bit about Converge 2016. Give me a give me a snapshot of what's going to be. Yeah, the purpose of Converge is to bring the body of Christ together, no matter what ministry organization, no matter what denomination. We want to come together under the banner, uh, banner We Are One. And so this year, we're so excited to have the bands 10th Avenue North, I Am They, and Hawk Nelson. Um, we're going to be headlining this year for worship, ushering the kids into the throne room of God. And then we have uh, three speakers back. We have Billy Beecham, who's the founder of See at the Pole, Dave Edwards, and Todd Gongwer, um, who wrote the book Lead for God's Sake. He's a good friend of Urban Myers. And so really excited to have these guys as our keynote speakers. Then we have 30 workshops for the students to attend. Um, they're breakout sessions, very heavy on discipleship, really um, like how to present the gospel, how to you know, lead someone to Christ. How, what does it mean to be a godly man or a woman? Um, so yeah, we're excited about the, the workshops. And then also um, we have Operation Love Line, which is our big outreach. So really it's about coming together, learning, growing, worshiping together, and then taking what we've learned and going out and being Jesus' hands and feet in the community. What an incredible package of things, you know, Teenagers love to have exciting opportunities. They love to have fun. And you guys do all that at Teens for Christ. But the thing I love about Converge is, like you mentioned, the discipleship. You know, these speakers, Billy Beecham, he's not going to give them some lighthearted talk. Mm -hmm. You select speakers that are really going to invest in these kids' hearts and lives, right? Bob? That's so true. You know, I mean, that's, that's one of the things we want to do with Converge is it not to be an emotional uh, uh, meeting or just get them up, you know, uh, that way and where they're excited. Not that there's not going to be fun there, mm -hmm. but it is where, you know, it's not just those guys too. We got 30 other speakers coming in from all over the country um, to teach them how, to, how to, to present the gospel to their friends at school, you know, how to pray, how to study the word of God. So we're really excited about that. So we're targeting eighth grade on up. Is that correct on the age wise? Eighth and 12th grade. Why is it so important at this time in their life to feed them this kind of information? Well, you know, I, I really believe some of the decisions that are being made right now at that age, number one is most people accept Jesus Christ do so before they're 19 years of age. But also they're making decisions that forget about the future. They're making decisions if they're going to minister to their friend tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So it's about, it's about today. If, if we can get them turned on about Jesus today, then they will make an impact because they have tremendous faith, they have tremendous energy, and then they, they just trust God like a child. And uh, so, and when you get that kind of movement with one person or a group of people, mm -hmm. you know, if it's a youth group or a school, now you get some great things happening. I'm so thankful for programs like Teens for Christ and Converge because when I was growing up in high school, in Iowa, in a rural town, nobody was doing things like this. Mm -hmm. There maybe was a church night, but that was because you had to go. Right. You know, that was not the cool thing to do. Yet y here we have an event that's coming up. I mean, my eighth grade daughter is clamoring to go to this. Yeah. She wants to be there because she wants to hear what Billy Beecham has to say, right. you know? So it's Elida Fieldhouse this year. Tell me a little bit about the uh, logistics and how people can sign up. Yeah, yeah, we moved to Elida Fieldhouse. This is our first year there. Um, we outgrew the UNH Event Center last year. Um, around 1,000 people between students and adults. So really excited for what God's going to do here at a new venue, new location. 
Um, but convergemovement.com is our website. People can go there to find out all the information regarding tickets, all of our speakers, bands, workshops, Operation Love Lima. Um, that's going to be the easiest way to get all the logistics of that. But it is Friday evening, all day Saturday on um, April 15th and 16th. So 6 to 11 on Friday, 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. on Saturday. And Saturday is going to be chock full of a lot of things. That's going to be Operation Love Lima, all of our workshops. Um, lunch and dinner will be provided then on Saturday too. Ticket prices are $60, or if they get a group of 15 or more, they're going to be $45, so $15 off if there's a youth group going um, of uh, 15 or more. And so we're really excited, too. We have some youth groups coming from Dayton, um, West Virginia, Texas. A lot of people are, are hearing about this event mm -hmm. happening in Lima, Ohio, and they want to be a part of it. So we're really excited. That's mm -hmm. awesome. That is great. Tyler Buck, thank you so much for talking with us. We will, of course, be telling you more about this as well. Watch for the uh, public service announcements, the commercials, all the different things. Be praying for this event. Mm -hmm. Be praying for the kids who are going to come. Mm -hmm. Be praying for the kids who need to be coming. Mm -hmm. Could it be that this two-day weekend could be the spark that is necessary to light a fire into a young person's life, to be that next generation to do amazing things? incredible things for Christ. And you can call the Teens for Christ office. That is that Elida Road address that Tyler mentioned in case you have questions and convergemovement.com, right guys? Yep. Dot com mm -hmm. right. is the, uh, the website that you want to go to find out more. All right, well, there's so many things that we could keep talking about with Teens for Christ, but we have another organization to share with you who's working very hard to reach today's young adult generation with the gospel of Jesus, and that's FCA. Andy Lynch talks with the organizers of the Parkway FCA chapter who say relationship building and like-minded fellowship are essential to being a Christian teen in today's society. FCA is going really good this year. I've been excited about everyone who's been showing up and it's really fun to see people grow in their faith and um, the relationships that we've built this year. When I was a freshman, I really was looking for someone to start FCA because I felt like we needed the Christian leadership in our sports programs because I feel like it's important to have Christian atmosphere in sports, not just in certain aspects of our lives. Sometimes it seems like Christian values might not be shown on the football field because they're not looked upon as what everybody wants to do. It might not be the popular thing to do, but I'm really excited that it's been started here and I'm just excited to hear what happens in the next upcoming years for FCA. Panthers promote an open family environment for their weekly meeting. It's really nice because you can be open about like anything with everyone here. The Wednesday mornings is just awesome because sometimes you need a break from school and just talking from everybody from school, uh, just talking about God and talking about what's going on in our lives. Lately, God has really been like putting on my heart like mentoring, honestly, because we have like freshmen on our basketball team and freshmen like around the school and I love like talking to them and letting them know that I'm there for them, praying with them if they like need to. I've always known that God's loved me but God's been really teaching me that he loves you no matter how far away you run from him, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've done in your past, how broken you may feel. If you come to him in repentance and you ask for his forgiveness, he will come with you with open arms and he will guide your life. I'll be the proudest fellow in the Eastern Parade. Never saw you look quite so pretty before, before. Never saw you dressed quite so lovely once more, once more. I could hardly wait to keep our date this lovely Easter morning. And my heart beats fast as I came through the door. For in your Easter bonnet, with all the frills upon it, you'll be the grand lady in the Easter parade. I'll be all in clover, and when they look you over, I'll be the proudest fellow in the Easter parade. On the avenue, on the avenue, Fifth Avenue, Photographers will snap 
and that you're in the road of grandeur. Oh, I could write a sonnet about your Easter bonnet and of the girl I'm taking to the Easter, the Easter, the girl I'm taking to the That's the Lima Bean Chorus. They were in our studio last year just a few weeks before their 2015 concert. And this year's show, 2016, coming up very soon. That's right. You know what? We still have tickets for that show. And uh, it is coming up this Saturday. It's March 19th, 2 o'clock and 7.30. Tickets are $15 at the door. But we've got some right here. that You can, you can get tickets if you contact us before 2.30 on Friday. All right. That's the cutoff. Before 2.30. 2 very, very distinct cutoff, I can tell. That's it, it, it is, because we got to make sure we can make connections and we can get together and we can get you the tickets. So 2.30 on Friday. It's a really great show. You know, last yeah. year I had an opportunity to actually be the MC of it. It's just a lot of fun. The, uh, the It's for family. I think it's a great thing actually to bring younger kids to because it's a style of music that they're not going to hear on the radio. Right but it's classic and it's neat. It's at a new location this year. Lima Senior High School Auditorium is where it will all take place. And we look forward to that. That's right. And uh, don't forget, again, you can get the tickets by giving us a call, 419-339-4444, extension 162. Or you can email me directly, jbeck at wtlw.com. Again, that's the Lima Bean Chorus 2016 Barbershop Quartet. It's called Barbershop Harmony Time, and it's featuring Boardwalk. Well, Saturday is the Lima Bean Chorus, and then Sunday is the Natalie Grant Concert at the Nice Runger, where you can meet Oh Andy boy, <laughs> you can meet me and my wife, although she doesn't like the spotlight, so just say hi. But we're excited to uh, see Natalie Grant in concert at Nice Wonger. And speaking of concerts and giveaways, there's still time to register to win tickets to the Time of My Life Tour, also in Van Wert, at Calvary Evangelical Church, April the 8th, featuring the actors, Chris August, Unspoken, and Among the Thirsty. You can register right now for any of these giveaways at faithandfriends.wtlw.com. Dot com and click on the contest. And actually, we're also going to give away a pair of those Time of My Life tickets at the Natalie Grant concert. All right. You're going to give them away. So come to Van I hadn't Wart, told you this yet. You didn't know this. I'm giving them away. Do, I, do you have those tickets? I gave them to you, actually. You gave the tickets to me, and I will now give the <laughs> tickets back to you so you can give them away. See, we work together very well. Well, more than just tickets, we're also giving away books. Earlier in the show, we talked about the importance of providing positive role models and mentoring to young people. That includes quality reading material. We've been telling you about Natalie Grant's book series aimed towards eight through 12 year olds. Faith and Friends junior reporter Abby Beck shares about this book review in book number two in the Glimmer Girls series. I read book two in the Glimmer Girls series by Natalie Grant. It's called The Dolphin Wish and takes place in Captain Swashbuckler's Adventure Park. Just like book in book one, this book follows the travels of Mia, Maddie, and their little sister, Lulu. In this story, the girls travel with their mom to the city of San Diego, but once again, things don't go as planned. It starts out when the, when the family goes to the park, uh, to the adventure park, and sees penguins on the loose. The next day, the flamingos are on the loose. At the end of the day, Mia thinks she knows who is doing it, but, but she has no proof. That night, she convinces her mom to take her to the park again, again, and they finally get the picture of the person who is doing the releases. Mia learns that you can't do everything by yourself. You sometimes need a little help. Their faith is a big element of their family. Reading this book causes me to want my faith to be like theirs. I recommend the Glimmer Girls series to any girl between the ages of 8 and 12. It's published by Zonder Kids and can be found in Christian bookstores, including Gifts of Joy in Lima. You can also order these books online. I hope Natalie Grant writes more books in her series so we can follow the mysterious travels of Mia, Maddie, and Lulu. 
Overall, I think every single one of us probably has an area of self-control that we want to be working on. Today, we want to give you four points that you could use to overcome some areas in your life that need more self-control. Every single one of us has something to work on. Mm -hmm. And point number one, we just showed it to you on the screen. Part number one, start by asking God to show you areas of your life that are out of control. Mm. That's a very good one. Is it a temper? Perhaps it's eating too much of that chocolate. Maybe you spend a lot of time on your phone or on the computer, or on your phone, staying up mm. too late, not reading the Bible regularly, watching inappropriate movies, listening to questionable music that doesn't help your spirit. In any of these areas, God says, I have a better way for you. But the first step is recognizing you have an area in your life that needs some work. You know, I found myself late at night. My husband works second shift, so my kids go to bed, and I'm by myself a lot of times in the evening. And you know what I want to be doing? I want to be reading my Bible. I want to be investing in some other important things like that. And what do I find myself doing? That's a thumb scrolling through something like Facebook. You know, yeah. worthless, worthless. So that's my challenge. I'm challenging myself. I'm giving myself phone hours. I'm giving myself social media hours. Mm. I've got to shut it off. I've got to put it away. It's not easy. No. You get into these habits. Right. It's not easy. Right. They can be very ingrained. And so take some time and formulate what that is. Then formulate a plan to help you work on the specific thing in your life like Jennifer has done. Be ready to fight temptation. Go back to it, especially in the beginning. You are changing habits, walking away from things that are not good for you. And in the end, telling the devil he's losing control and you are letting God take control. Mm. Don't be too hard on yourself if you slip right at the start or even in the middle. Be determined to get back up. You're not a failure for falling down. You're a failure. Well, you're not a failure. God says you're not a yeah. failure. But failure is when we fail to get back up. That's what uh, the devil wants us to do, to stay down, to beat ourselves up. But God says, nope, I have a new way for you. He reaches mm -hmm. down. He picks you up. And pray regularly for strength through these situations. It doesn't matter how many times you fall, to right. be honest. Right. Stop beating yourself up Keep and say, up. I am going to step forward. Thirdly, consider telling someone that you're working on this area in your life. You know, that gives you a prayer partner, someone you can call, text, contact if you find yourself struggling to fall back into the worldly patterns. It should be someone you can trust, someone who's a Christian, someone who will keep you accountable, but will also be merciful and supportive if you do find yourself in a moment of weakness and you fall back into that temptation. So important to have someone in your life and to speak the times when you're, you're feeling tempted or to speak or maybe not Facebook, Jennifer, because you've got your hours for doing that. That's right. I'm not using Facebook as my <laughs> accountability. People will say, what are you doing <laughs> posting at 10.05 when you're supposed to be done at 10? There you go. But it does uh, take the weight out of the situation when you're fighting those temptations. If you speak it out loud or you tell somebody, it's very important. Finally, commit to the long term. Depending on the area of self-control you're working on, this could involve weeks, months, even years of hard work. Commit to daily Bible reading and prayer, knowing that God is the path to victory and allows yourself to celebrate small victories one day without backsliding one week two weeks mark those anniversaries as you move forward working towards having more self-control in these important areas of your life and as you do that as you get, gain some traction your brain's literally rewired in mm -hmm. these areas and you do feel the freedom that comes you know, this was not a self-control issue, but I got put onto a different diet about eight weeks ago. And I tell you what, at the beginning, it was really hard. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how much my mind and my body was used to a certain system. Now, eight weeks later, it's so much different. I feel better. So many areas have improved. It's that same way in this issue of your life that you want to get more control on. You've got to push through those difficult beginning points. So you can get to the point where you can look back and go, ah. I have made a way, and it is a better thing. Yeah. So let us know what you're doing in those areas. We can help as well. The main scripture passage for this year's Faith Challenge, of course, is 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5-7. through 7. Read through those passages, and you'll find self-control as one of the listed attributes. And you can join our 2016 Faith Challenge, returning the reply card found in this month's newsletter, or by emailing us at faithandfriendswtlw.com. Well, we have some good news. Mm. Spring officially begins mm. next week. Next week, the 21st. I think it already began because we moved our clocks. <laughs> yeah, we've kind of had spring. We've had more and spring. And the weather's been really good. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, the season <laughs> of spring brings growth, new life, new beginnings. Trees will bud with leaves. Color returns to the region. More sunlight. Spring is one of my three favorite seasons of the year. Which one is not on that three list? Did we just exit it? We didn't really have it this year, so I guess it hasn't been a bad year for me. 
TV44 Spring also means the annual Spring to Life campaign. Look for our special green logo as a reminder that God truly can make all things new. He does it every year in this season of spring right here in Ohio. And we hope and pray that God's making things new in the lives of people who watch TV44. The Spring to Life campaign is an opportunity to again partner financially with TV44. We have a goal to raise $75,000 between now and Mother's Day. Every dollar invested in TV44 is in turn used to reach the region for Jesus Christ. If you've been thinking of giving a gift to TV44, now's a great time to do so. No gift is too small nor too large. Donate securely at WTLW.com, by mail, over the phone, or in person. Also consider signing up for a monthly automatic withdrawal, a safe and reliable way to continue to partner with TV44 every month of the year. Finally, we'll close our show the way we started, bringing our focus back to the youth. TV44 is here for many reasons, but one key reason is to make a positive impact on the next generation. We realize there are many young people who are searching. They're striving to find love and acceptance, but many are looking in the wrong things to fill the voids in their lives and they remain empty. We want to provide them Jesus. Jesus is the only one who will truly fill those holes. So we clo close with a reminder that we are called to impact the lives of young people every moment of the day. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verses 18 through 21. Therefore you shall lay up these words on your mind, in your heart, of mine, on your heart and in your soul, and bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall teach them to your children, speaking to them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on the gates. In your days, in the days of your children, may be multiplied in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give to them, like the days of the heavens above the earth. Thanks for joining us this week as we usher in Holy Week. We pray it's a good one for you.